open. I mean, I just want to make sure that, you know, what I'm asking for is correct. You know, what I'm seeking for. That's all. Well, I do have a couple questions before I would vote for it. I sure. want you know, that. I understand that. I, you know, I just, you know, I would like to give my support. I want to see the, you know, the beautification of Pemberton Township, Browns Mills. But um, there's a lot of questions out there, and I don't see a rush, rush, rush. I mean, we can, oh, we already paid for this, didn't we? Ms. I was going to make the, the motion, but make the motion with um, the idea to have, I forget who asked about it, to have a presentation. Yeah. We still, I was still going to make the motion to do it with putting in there that we have a presentation that I forget who asked for A maybe. presentation on what the plans are Correct. for I think that. Correct. Mr. Uh, Mr. George. Patronus. Patronus, thank you. Well, Sorry. Uh, my question is what are, what is administration's plans with the building now? Uh, are there township employees that are being planned to be moved into the buildings? Why do they sit there and we wait for a developer? Uh, are we going to rent them out? That could be in the presentation, couldn't it? Well, I think we need those answers from administration before it's introduced. That's just my my feelings. I'm one of five. Do we have any any answers for any of that? As expressed in the past, I'll express it again. They, we would like to purchase these properties in this redevelopment zone and demolish the, the properties, clear the lots, get a redeveloper to come in, the, okay. uh, and then redevelop this area. So your intention would be demolish the buildings immediately? As soon as possible. After we get Pinelands approval on anything 50 years After or later? After we get all the approvals uh, necessary. About, usually about how long does the, um, the approvals take? The only state agencies, government agencies, so it's hard to say. Uh, we, would, we would do it as, as quick as possible, but it wouldn't happen in a week in a, in, or in a month. But we would hope that it wouldn't take the 20 years it was expressed. Well, I have a question for council. Aren't you interested in just about what it's going to cost? I mean, I'm just sitting up here looking at a new bill. I guess, you know, we'll get underneath of that. But um, it's for the uh, appraisals for the property at $4,150. I mean, aren't you interested in how much money is going to be dug out of the UEZ? Absolutely. That's why I okay. came up with a presentation. All right. You do a presentation, don't you have all that stuff presented? I would hope that they would. Well, the or just to clarify, the ordinances right now have prices in them. There's a negotiated price on the one set of properties of 220,000, and a negotiated it. price right. on the other one of 110,000. Right. And I think the my understanding is that those are negotiated <laughs> prices, uh, and they are subject to environmental review, and they are also subject to uh, the town getting an appraisal to confirm that those are fair prices, which uh, administration believes they are, but which they, we, we need to confirm, obviously, and we've got a right to opt out if we decide that they are not consistent with the appraisal or if we find any environmental issues. But what it does do is it locks in the property owners who right now are marketing these properties. It commits them to sell them to the town for those prices subject to those contingencies uh, uh, which I discussed. Uh, so that's what it does. And, it, and it, to go back to your original question, Councilwoman Stenny, uh, in terms of, uh, obviously it's always the council's choice about whether it wants to uh, uh, defer action on, on an ordinance or whether it wants to introduce an ordinance. But uh, uh, as Councilwoman Jackson said, uh, it, th what's being discussed right now is introduction and there certainly could be some time period in between which is set forth for a presentation and certainly any ordinance is going to have to have a public hearing before right. it gets adopted. So mm -hmm. it's not as if this t tonight's action will lock the town in anything other than starting a process which will then have a public hearing component. So again, it's up to the council whether it wants to defer, whether it wants to move forward, what it wants to do. But but those are my understanding of some of the options and, and also the contingencies and, and the reason why it might make some sense to start moving forward because if the properties get marketed and sold 
in the meantime, they're not locked in right now. Well, I hate to just say this, and I don't want to be negative, but I think that's been sitting there for a very, very, very long time. Um, <laughs> and um, my question, Sherry, you know, I think y'all wanted to buy the Sapporo Builder, didn't you? Yeah, I -E -A? Okay, right. Um, my concern, too, and I do have a concern, is that um, so we do move ahead with the two um, houses, the, the two uh, places on the end and the house in the back and then we have um, this uh, area here of the JC market down to the laundry mat that they've been and I know for a fact they've been trying to sell that for eight hundred and something thousand dollars I even went in there and asked them are you looking forward to selling this or you know what's the plan on you know what are you going to do with this I think way before I became on the council when the JC market had to had the uh, dress shop around the corner where the CVS is so that's been uh, I ain't telling my age but <laughs> it involved a long time but I'm just worried so we got those two ends the Shapiro and the and the um, in the um, the uh, auto spot, and then we tear down whatever we got, and then voila! Here's the great big picture of the JC Market right in the front, and the uh, laundry mat, and that will draw more attention than the, the buildings that are tore down. I just want to know what we plan on doing with that. You know, if we're gonna have enough money to even buy uh, what they want for it. Like I said, I heard the offer was eight hundred thousand dollars. I may be wrong. Maybe they'll come down. That's just me. I'm just one vote. Seem to all have opinions here, which is good. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good. Census. Address it. I, I really feel that it's a good introduction to move ahead with it. I mean, it said the amounts are there. If the, the appraisers go through it and it's not, in, not conducive for selling or nothing, that's something we could back down and it's not obligated. But if this is the price set and it's another, someone else could come and buy it for much more. <coughs> if we could start somewhere is a start. Right now, the front of the Browns Mills Development Center has been the eyesore for so many years that I've been here. But if we could start somewhere, I say it's a start to move this township forward. So I say yes, let's introduce it. Ordinance 8 2015 Hey, Dave, I have one more question. Jason, you mind if I ask this question? Just stand and go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, the UEZ funding there. Can the governor come down and say, "Okay, I want you. I want that money because you're not doing anything with that money." Can you help me out with that question, Dave? Well, it's. Uh, I, I think there's always that potential. I, I right now there are UEZ funds being held by the town, uh, but for affordable housing trust fund, for instance. You may recall, mm -hmm. or you, maybe not, but I mean, it, a lot of towns held affordable housing trust funds, uh, and at some point in time, the state wrote letters to all those towns and said, if you don't spend or commit the money by the state, we're taking the money back. And a lot of towns were then fighting about that, and I think there's still fights going on about that, but there's an example of something that used to be held by a town, the state tried to uh, seize it at some point in time, and now there's a fight about it. Uh, I mean, the UEZ is a state program. Um, I mean, obviously the money is earmarked for UEZ purposes, but who gets to administer that, whether it ultimately stays a town thing or whether at some point the state jumps in, I can't say I know for sure. Uh, but uh, it, I guess given the fact that with the affordable housing trust funds, the state stepped in and tried to take them away from towns, I mean, I think there's a possibility that that could occur with UEZ as well. Okay, you said possibility. So along with the other questions, could you um, uh, maybe perhaps um, we can address that as well? We'll address it how, besides what I've done? Can the state, well, can the state really, I mean, give us some, you know, towns. I mean, I know Mount Holly, um, they were the only UEZ in Burlington County that we had. I mean, they utilized their and, uh, funding and, and stuff like that. I heard what you gave us, but can you Your give Your question us is, is it possible for the yeah. state to come in? Do you in? know of any towns that they have come in and said, okay, uh, let me have your UEZ funding? I know there's only two. I um, don't Holland. know anything whether they did or they didn't. But I that's know. my question. Can you can you look I, into it for me? Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Yes. Okay. I could look into it and see if I, if, if that's happened before. I don't know. I was okay. giving you an example where it did happen, which is affordable housing trust funds. Yeah, affordable housing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I indicated earlier, the uh, introduction of this ordinance, 8 and um, 9, allows the um, the public to actually comment on it and give some of these questions at either the next meeting or whenever it's put back on the uh, agenda. So some of the questions that Ms. Stenny has, questions and concerns Ms. Skull has, and anyone from the public uh, will be documented um, and hopefully addressed in a presentation by the administration. Well, now I have a bigger concern. If we tear the buildings down, we're going to have two very expensive lots that the township owns. And what if we don't get a developer? And what if the other people don't sell? You know, I, I don't know. Anyhow, I think Mrs. Uh, Trupel had made a motion to introduce. Did I think you she not? Did. Yes, I did. So, is there a second for that? I'll second it. Amy, please pull the council. Ms. Trublin? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Skull? No. Ms. Denny? No. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ordinance number 9-2015, an ordinance of the Township of Pemberton authorizing the purchase of the property located at 34 Juliustown Road in the Township from Paul Sh Shapiro. I'll make the motion to introduce Ordinance 9, 2015. Um, before we move forward with that motion, I'm assuming the comments would be the same. Are there any council, council we need, comments? We need a date for a hearing, too. We didn't do that on the first one. Uh, we can make it May 6th, or if council wishes to move it to May 20th to give more time for a presentation yeah. and other questions well, to be answered. We'll do May 20th, so um, administration. Council President, if I could call, should you remember these are properties that are on the market, and this does not lock it down by an introduction, and we would uh, we would be prepared we would be prepared on the six to answer any questions uh, the council may have for presentation. Okay, that's fine. A six. Are there any um, comments for ordinance number nine? Council? No, my comment stays the same, and okay. I really would like to know, um, has anyone approached the, um, from the J.C. market down to the laundromat, has anyone approached those uh, owners to see what their amount is they're asking for? Uh, that's all. The, I want the same questions asked. Is there a motion on ordinance number nine? That's, that's 2015 with public hearing also on uh, May 6th. I think Ms. Jackson had made a motion. I was just doing the, the public hearing also. Yeah. Sure. To add the public hearing, May 6th. Is there a second? Uh, yes, I'll second. To add it for May 6th with a presentation and a motion. Ordinance 92015. Amy, please pull the council. Mrs. Jackson? Yes. Mrs. Trueblood? Yes. Mrs. Stinney? Yeah. Oh, no! Sorry. <laughs> I, was, no. I was doing something else. <laughs> Sorry. No, although I do feel a little better about the price of this one. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Yes. Uh, ordinances for second reading, public hearing, and or final adoption. Ordinance number seven. Dash 2015, an ordinance of the Township of Pemberton amending Chapter 41 of the Code of the Township of Pemberton, entitled Police Department, Section 41-15, Chaplain. Uh, this is now open to public comment. Mr. Tompkins. Sorry, I'm up here so much tonight. Real winded, I guess. Um, like I've been saying all along, I, I, I agree with this ordinance. I support it wholeheartedly. Um, but I also kind of mentioned at the last council 
meeting that, that you folks might want to look at maybe some verbiage in this. Um, a lot of times we come to council meetings and it's we don't have the authority or we don't have the power to do this. Um, and I looked at the ordinance and I read it and it get, gives a, a reference of NJSA uh, 40A14141 and I looked at it in the internet and I'm not a lawyer or nothing but it says the governing body of any municipality by ordinance may provide an appointment of one or more chaplains to the police department or force. Now, it doesn't specifically say it has to be the mayor. It just says any governing body, and, and that could be the executive, legislative, or judicial, I, I'm assuming. So I'm kind of wondering why you didn't put language in this to prevent what we ran into at the last council meeting where we don't have an, a chaplain and the mayor wasn't available or no one else was available. And what I'm proposing is on the bottom of the sheet that I handed out, uh, maybe another paragraph added to this ordinance, and I hate to delay it because I know we need to have it in place, but in the event there is no appointed chaplain to the police department, the council may make a temporary appointment with a majority vote. This appointment will last no less than 90 days and will oh. not exceed 180 days unless extended by the council vote or an appointment by the mayor. I mean, it's pretty solicitor is adding any language to what's already produced legal well adding language to an ordinance is always legal so long as the language itself is legal the issue really is an ordinance was introduced and published to the world which says one thing now we're talking about changing it to add something else and normally, whenever there's anything other than a typographical change, if there are material changes in an ordinance, it would then start the process over again. You'd introduce and start it over again because now what you're looking at is not version one. You're now looking at version two. So, uh, so beyond the issue of of is the council empowered to do this or not, which frankly I don't know. I mean, normally the mayor is, with the advice and consent of, of council, is the one that appoints. Uh, um, officials in the town, and I would assume that the chaplain is the same, but we could look. Uh, but besides that, I think this would be a material change, because it's obviously in addition. So it theoretically could be done, but I think it would then mean we'd be reintroducing a new ordinance tonight with this in it, assuming it was lawful, and then putting it on for another public hearing at a later point, et cetera, et cetera. It would be sort of shifting it back. So if you understand. And, and this is the first time we've been able to address this, so I, I, I apologize for the delay. But then again, you know, we've been without a chaplain since January now. We could run into this next year or the year after. And like I said, we keep hearing from the council. We don't have any authority. We don't have the ability to do this. Write these things to give yourself a little bit of leeway here. And... You know, I don't know if it, I'm, I'm going to assume it's legal because of what I read in here, but uh, in the ordinance itself, it says on the bottom here that, you know, if a judge says it's not legal, then he can do a, a line item removal of that one paragraph and the rest of the ordinance would stay in place. Uh -huh. So no harm, no foul. And I'm sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just interpreting well, the issue. Memory. The issue would be, I don't want to interrupt, uh, but the issue would be this ordinance that you're referring to, 40A14141, says the governing body, which is the council, may by ordinance provide for the appointment of one or more chaplains. Right. They provide for it by putting an ordinance together, which says, rather than saying chaplain, says chaplains, or says mm -hmm. multiple chaplains. It doesn't really answer the question of who does the appointment. I think that would be elsewhere in the Faulkner Act. All this says is the governing body, may, by ordinance, may provide for the appointment of chaplain or chaplains. And I think the proposal is to change chaplain to chaplains. Uh, so this statute does say the governing body does it in terms of the ordinance. It doesn't say who does the appointment. It just says may provide for the appointment. And as We'd the have to go elsewhere. As, as the ordinance is written right now, we could pass it tonight. And you know what's going to happen next month? You've given the mayor full authority of, uh, excuse me, a dictatorship, and you have no control over this, and we can go for another six months without a chaplain. Even though you passed the ordinance today, doesn't guarantee that anyone's going to appoint a chaplain next week. But if you make the amendment and introduce it and it passes, then it gives you the authority, if it isn't 
acted upon to act upon it yourself? Well, subject to the fact, and again, I don't have it in front of me, subject to the fact that I'm going to have to give legal advice or my firm's going to have to give legal advice if we think this is an illegal thing. And, I mean, again, could they, could this be considered? It could be considered, but if we're going to give, I mean, just saying the judge can overturn it doesn't mean that, I mean, I, I would never give legal advice saying uh, discriminate based on race or creed or color, because whether the judge overturns it or not, I know it's unlawful, and I would tell the council don't put that in the ordinance. That's not a lawful thing to put in an ordinance. And, and, and so, I, so I understand what you're saying, and I don't mean any insult. I understand. But we've had things in this township where, where legal counsel has believed that they were correct all the way through till it hit the judge. Mm-hmm and the judges told the legal counsel in this township that they were wrong. So as it stands, you're unsure about the language, if it were to be added? Well, there's two issues. One issue is this is giving a appointment power to the council. It's my understanding, generally in Faulkner Act towns, which is what this is, that normally subordinate officers and, and employees of the town are appointed by the mayor with advice and consent of the council, uh, and therefore normally appointments are mayoral appointments. I'd have to look at whether there's anything unique to chaplains that would make it any different. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but typically most appointments, borough attorney, borough engineer, uh, department heads, all those things are mayoral appointments with advice and consent. And they are permanent for one year, and the way I put the language in this, True. it would be a temporary 90 to 100 Understood. day. And that is makes it a little different and perhaps makes it a little different law, lawfully wise. Right. But so the issue one is whether this language is legal or not. I can't sit here today and say it is. I mean, again, it, it's actually against my general understanding, which is normally it's a mayoral appointment with, with advice and consent. Um, so that's issue one, but it, as the gentleman said, uh, maybe the fact that it's temporary makes a little difference. <coughs> We'd have to look at that. But issue two, which is also an important one, is uh, we've got an ordinance which was introduced, which was published, which people read in the newspaper. Whoever wanted to come talk about it did. Whoever didn't want to come about it didn't. If we're now going to change its substance, which this seems to do at least in one discrete area, in my view, a again, normally, uh, if you're changing the substance, what you do is you start the process again, you reintroduce and then you adopt start because the you start the process over because it's not just a typographical change it's not just a minor change it is a somewhat substantive change to what's going on and typically the law encourages when that occurs because there may be people that read what was the original ordinance and said i'm not going to bother coming out tonight because that looks fine to me or whatever, but maybe they'd have a comment now that this new language was there and they wouldn't have known because they never saw that this was going to be changed. So understood that this never had, a, the, co the public didn't have a chance to comment until now, understood that this was their chance and it's not like they're, they're late in it, this is exactly when they should be doing it, but if there's going to be any substantive or material changes beyond the legal issue of is this even lawful would be the issue of, in my view, that would start the process over. You wouldn't be adopting it tonight. You'd be introducing it as amended tonight. So I think those are the two legal issues that are out there that, I, as I see them. Did you have any questions for me? I threw out what I had. <laughs> I, I, I would just like to see you folks start Good try. Mm -hmm. We had this discussion. Well, you say good try like it's over, and I'm not counting this as over yet. We had the discussion with Andy uh, at one point um, in reference to this when we went up and had him go over the whole ordinance thing with us. So as much as I would like to say we could put that in there and move forward with it, we've been advised by our attorney that that appointment power is up to the mayor and this whole thing could be solved real quickly. And Possibly. Pos positively, if the mayor had just reappointed... Uh, the reverend or left them there until the new appointments are made. Okay. I have to dis respectfully dis disagree with the advice you got. I, I don't think there's a problem with this, to tell you the truth. Well, I will check with another attorney okay. because, and I've done that in the past, too. Thank you. Well, Sherry, I, I, I know we spent um, hours uh, with this, um, with Andy, and, um, of course, this last component here, um, that uh, Mr. Thompson brought forward, um, 
I, I just wish that we had that. I don't want to jump into something and we're able to maybe reintroduce this, let the folks look at it, and um, uh, maybe we can make a definitive um, um, uh, vote. As I said before, I have not a problem with um, uh, adding on more chaplains, but the more I see, <coughs> the more I see, um, the more I'm, I'm leery. Do I trust this? Do I, you know, I'm kind of leery with this. So I don't know. I, w I really would like to, if we could, you know, Jason, maybe um, have Andy evaluate this language and see if it is possible. Did, uh, did you, I thought you said you spoke to Andy about we it. We did, but I didn't have that language. We didn't have this, um, Jason. We had um, several of the other um, ordinances um, before, um, like the police, um, when they wanted to bring in, the, you know, all those ordinances there. That's what we kind of, but we didn't have this. The other thing uh, that that could happen, and then I see people from the public want to speak too. The other thing that could happen is the council could authorize the change from chaplain to chaplains, which is what the draft is now, and then assuming Andy looked and decided this other language was, was, was lawful and the council wished to do it, they could then introduce an ordinance to then make that second change at a later time. As I said, I think you'd be starting over anyway if you did that, but that would at least allow you to do the one thing that everybody knew was going to be done without slowing that part of it down, if the council wants to do it. Gotcha. Ms. Quinn? Ann Quinn, Country Lakes. Uh, something caught my attention as I, as I read this ordinance about changing from chaplain to chaplains. <coughs> and forgive me, I need to tie this together so you understand where I'm coming from. In previous ordinances when the mayor wanted to change the police department, change the police chapter to say that he shall appoint a police department director. In this ordinance, it says the mayor may appoint chaplains or a chaplain or chaplains. Now, how is it, in one aspect, you can say he shall, but in another aspect, you're going to say he may. He may. Well, the, sh this the shall was definitely in, in state, the state statute for the, for the other portion of Chapter 41 that you're referring to. Okay. I remember that specifically. I don't know. Do you have the language in front of you for, the, for this one? I don't have it in front of me, but I would just, I would assume that the answer is that there are some positions by law that have to be filled. There needs to be either a police director or a police chief or whatever else, but there are other positions that don't statutorily have to be filled, so those positions perhaps would be may rather than shall. That might be why. I don't know, though. Okay. To the other comment I have is... If I remember correctly at the last council meeting when Reverend Glass was abruptly dismissed as the police department's chaplain, it was explained in the, in the conversation that the chaplain position is not a paid township position or an employee, paid employee position, correct? Correct. Shall okay. serve without so, rank or, or payment. Okay. So... In, attempt, in an attempt to understand the fact that it's not a paid employed position, all this does is make the job that our police officers do a whole lot harder. And when I was here two weeks ago, you all know how I felt. But you all sat there and said to me, this isn't something that the council is, is doing. And I understand that it's administration. However, to leave the police department to this point without a chaplain is inexcusable and does irreparable harm. They're under enough stress as it is dealing with what we deal with, but they deal with day in and day out. Not for nothing, a lot of you don't know, a few weeks ago, I was up at one of the shopping centers 
still in my normal routine. This isn't the first time I've seen it. This happened to be the second or third time. But I saw what I believe to be a drug deal go down. Now, I happened to be in the right place. I happened to be in the right place at the time because I was patronizing one of our local businesses. I contacted the authorities, the police department, and made them aware of the situation. Now, given the increase of our young people and the drug use that seems to be a whole lot more prevalent as opposed to being hidden, the police department needs the chaplain even more. Not just because of the drug issue. We have a lot of problems. I'm asking the mayor. I'm asking the council. There has to be a chaplain at least reinstated at this point. And, you know, I never even thought about the idea, the language that Jack uh, is suggesting. What I don't want to see happen is if you pass this ordinance just to say from chaplain to chaplains, but then you don't reintroduce it to amend it to add the suggested language that Mr. Tompkins came up with, then we're back to where we are now with no chaplain or chaplains for the police department. So, given, so just because it's starting over and you don't want to hold something up, don't tell me you don't want to hold something up because you want something passed. I honestly think this can't be approved right now in the present form. I think there needs to be the additional language. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think the questions need to be answered if the language is legal or not. But, you know, we're constantly being left without things in this town that we're asked to pay for. Now, mind you, the council position, the uh, chaplain position is not a paid position, but, you know, let's go back to there's $7,000 in the budget for the dogs. But at this point, no decision has been made to replace the dogs. The police department needs a chaplain. But there's no decision as to who the chaplain or chaplains are going to be. But these guys are left with not having the right equipment that they need to do their job. We spend taxpayer money on brand new police cars that are supposed to hold canine dogs, but we don't have the dogs for them. You keep asking us to pay for things, but nothing gets nothing materializes. Please, for God's sakes, reinstate Pastor Glass as the chaplain until this can be worked out. Don't approve this now. Find out if the if the additional language would be suitable before anything is done. We bear the brunt of what you decide. And every, every, every meeting I come up here because I'm passionate about something. And you all look at me like I'm nuts. Well, I'm not. Please, do your jobs. Don't just rubber stamp something because you want to get it through and, oh, we'll deal with an amendment later if it comes up. I'd like to see any one of you go out on the street and do the job that they do without the resources that they need to do their job. And one of those resources is a chaplain. This needs to be fixed before it's passed. I don't think what we ask is too much to ask. We pay for it, and we tell you what we think, but you sit there and you just, with no expression on your face or know anything, find out if the language can be added. Because if it's not in the Faulkner Act, that it needs to be verified if it can be done or not. Just because something isn't in there doesn't mean it can't be done. Thank you. Ms. Quinn, the word may is in the uh, state code also. It is may. I just looked it up. Um, Mr. Uh, I forgot. It starts with the P. I wanted to say Mr. I wanted to say Mr. Presley, but I think that's right. <laughs> Prattley. I'm Pete Prattley, Presidential Lakes. I don't know, maybe I missed something, but uh, how did we get our previous past, the, the, the police department's previous pastor? 
How how was that one appointed or assigned or whatever? I think it was by in, the mayor, correct? Right? Yeah, in, in January there's usually a uh, chaplain appointment. Okay. And, and this uh, past January we didn't have a chaplain appointment? There was, there was not an, an appointment. We haven't had a chaplain okay. appointment. Okay, so what is this years? ordinance going to do? Uh, if the mayor could appoint a, a, a chaplain prior to January 1st, 1st 2015, what's this ordinance going to do now to have him appoint one? The ordinance, the, I'll just explain one thing. The only thing the ordinance does is it allows, which the council was allowed to do under this statute, it allows the appointment of more than one chaplain rather well, than one chaplain. Well, if appoint one, what makes you think he's going to appoint more than one? Well, there was one that was appointed. And what happened to him? Does anybody know? Because I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I missed the last couple of meetings. What happened to the last chaplain? Why is he not a chaplain anymore? Well, I don't think we, I think we all found out at the same time at the last meeting, am I correct, Council, that um, Pastor Glass was not reappointed. We found out from him at that last meeting. As to why, The last meeting, I don't, that was sometime in the last what, April? April. April. Yes. This month. And this month. so he wasn't reappointed in January? Not to. And now it's April? And not to our knowledge. I don't know where. why he's not. But but I just don't understand why working on another ordinance, what, what, what is that going to do when there's already some authority, has to be, or else the previous chaplain would not have been appointed there has to be some authority somewhere there is an in writing already. to appoint a, a chaplain. Yes, so why are we doing one. this one? Because now well, they it want allows more, than, more, than, more than, one. than one. But you ain't got one. What are you going to do with two? Uh, Thank you. Mr. Um, Mr. Prattley, hey. I believe in the past, the, uh, it's been a while, the, I believe the past chaplain was only appointed one time with our consent. I think they just, he just rolled just for a few going. years, right. Okay, so and the one's formally appointed on paper. Not every year, year right. Just right. He was the chaplain. Right. This, um, and I'm sure if the men need some help, I know who they're going to go to. That's right. Mm -hmm. This might help a little bit. Um, in the Burlington County Times yesterday, I believe, I, there was an article, and, um, the article said, administration is eyeing improvements to the police chaplain program and hopes to reappoint Reverend Glass after the new program is established. Uh, my question for... What? Go ahead. Go ahead. My, my question for Dave is, uh, what exactly are these imp improvements? Just so the public and council is aware. Good job, Jason. I'm sending out letters to all the members of clergy in the community and any other interested members that would uh, like to participate and uh, we are hoping to get them together uh, to discuss their interest in the in the program I've also requested from the chief of police what the program actually is defining it so that I know what I'm appointing someone to uh, I don't actually and it's sad to say, know exactly what the program is, what what guidelines, what rules do we have, what regulations are in place that govern... Can we please quiet down, please, in the audience, please? ...that, that govern the program uh, that the chief manages, so I've asked for that information also. After receiving all this information and speaking with members of uh, clergy that are interested in being chaplains, then I'll, I'll make a decision as to uh, what we're, where we're going forward with the program. Now, what, what happens before then? Let's just say it takes, you know, Chief, a month or so to get back to you. Um, who will serve as the chaplain in the, in the interim? Well, the Chief will get back to me tomorrow. That's what he's been instructed to do. So I'll have, I'll have that information. Letters will go out to members of the clergy uh, before the end of the week. We will be pursuing this. We are pursuing this and have been pursuing this uh, this issue, uh, contrary to what others may believe or the uh, press may be reporting. This issue is a uh, is one of the priority issues that we are addressing. Then can I ask why it was such an important thing to remove Reverend Glass? Why couldn't he have just continued to be the chaplain until we brought the other people on and then 
move forward it, that way? Why was he told his services were no longer needed when there is no other chaplain? Well, you're, you're, you're incorrect and you're misstating uh, uh, at least if the comments are, were my comments, that's, that's uh, actually uh, incorrect. Well, no, I'm not playing word games. I well, just want to know. Well, you are playing word games. No, You're saying why? that he was, was removed we, from he was we, removed from his position, and you also said that his services were no longer le needed. No one has ever said that okay, in well, my that's administration. Okay, well, kind of what we've had people. Can, Ms. Quinn, I gave you... So multiple times to please, talk. Please, if you're so, asking, well, you Dave please asking please the go. process in which I talk in, at where we are, can, can we speak, allow, allow him to talk and then re reiterate the question? Just, we'll speak at one time. If you're asking the question as to how we arrived at where we are, then I can answer that question. Each year, the, as you know, according to the ordinance, there is a appointment made by the mayor and can only be made by the mayor, regardless of what you put in your ordinance, because as you well know, it has been explained to you, that is governed under the Faulkner Act. So your ordinance is correct, and we're just asking you to slightly change your ordinance so that we can offer more opportunities to our officers, and that's by changing the word chaplain to the word chaplains. This year, in January, I... Hey, believe me, it, it's not by any, uh, you know, intent. I did not appoint a chaplain. It was not brought to my attention that there was no appointment to a chaplain's position by member anyone in the chaplain program or in the police department uh, that we did not make this appointment. And I failed to make this appointment. It came to my attention when there was a request for an expenditure uh, in the chaplain's program, and then it... I realized we did not have a chaplain because there was no appointment. Therefore, I could not approve an expenditure for an individual that was not appointed to his rightful position. Uh, it's no, there's no intent to uh, stop anyone from that's qualified from being a part of the program. It then, I then became aware that maybe we need to look at this program a little bit Further. Maybe we need to have better uh, safeguards in place so, number one, we don't get to where we are today, and number two, we fill some of the voids that I, I've come to believe after looking at the program further that are in the program. Uh, some, of these, some of these include things such as uh, individuals and the chaplain program, as I've been learning and, and understanding and as I've been reading more about it, it's not about what faith you actually are. It's, there's other duties, and it's non-denomination. But don't tell me that a true hardcore Catholic, born, raised Catholic, and that's all they believe in their beliefs, is going to sit down with a hardcore Baptist minister. And I don't. And even more of an example. How how do you what do you offer for a female officer that wants to speak, that wants to speak to a female chaplain that would feel more comfortable. So I thought about these things and said, you know what, why don't we expand the program and offer more chaplains, as most towns do, they have chaplains programs. And I, I, that, was the, that was the direction I started to take. And, and at that point, uh, you know, this whole thing exploded into, well, you're, you're, you're not, you're firing the chaplain. I didn't fire the chaplain. I never hired the chaplain, number one. We appointed the chaplain, and we, we intend to appoint, appoint chaplains uh, going forward. But when I thought about the program, I had, I had then realized, I don't even know what the program is. What do we have in place that governs are chaplains and what they can and can't do. There was some things mentioned to me actually by the chief that were concerning that, wait, our chaplains are doing what? That puts us at risk. We need to rethink the program and we need to have safeguards in place so that the program has some d direction, that there is, there is things in place that people uh, that are in the program understand and can follow.
So it sounds like there's dialogue between you and the police chief. Absolutely. Okay, Miss Miss Skull. Um, I, I think she had a, a separate. Thank you for your explanation, but I think she had a, a separate question. I think I did, and it didn't get answered. So, and I will tell you, my issue isn't with having multiple chaplains. My issue was why did you feel at this point when we have all this upheaval? I'll make it clearer because apparently I didn't make it clear to begin with. With lawsuits, uh, locker rooms, dogs, and everything else, why was was Reverend Glass not allowed to continue as chaplain when he has been doing that job? And you didn't answer that question, so I guess I'm not going to have an answer. Thank you. Dave, would would you care to address that again? He when, had plenty of time. When it was determined that the appointment had not been made, and then in looking at the program and realizing that there was no program that I knew of, and there was deficiencies that I felt, it was administration's decision that we would evaluate the program, and before I make an appointment to a program, I need to know that the program is a good program for the township. When was the last appointment made? I would say officially, by me verbally, verbally, 2013, I believe uh, Dennis had passed on a conversation that we had had in 14 when it was brought to his attention. No, I'm not asking that. When was the last time that you had on an agenda in January or whenever it was to appoint the chaplain? I don't know that that, uh, that comes, on, comes on the agenda. I, I don't believe that requires consent of counsel. That's just an I think according the to the statute, it did. I believe I don't when believe we were it's looking at consent. the other one. I believe, it's, okay, I'm I believe just it's an appointment by the mayor, and, okay. and there is no consent. Of Dave, um, right. also in that article, um, it says that uh, Reverend Glass supports the ordinance uh, because it seems like uh, there's a lot of support being put behind Reverend Glass. Um, I'm asking you, how does Reverend Glass fit into your plan moving forward? I have received a letter of intent, uh, or a letter of interest from Reverend Glass, and he is certainly going to be welcomed into the program once I understand what the program is, which I don't know at this point. And you just said that you and the chief, police chief, have been in discussion, and he's supposed to get back to you tomorrow. And the police chief is in, in the back of the room, so obviously he, he's hearing this also. Um, Mr. Prattley, again, please. Why he comes up, Council President, can I just say one thing Why he comes sure. up? Sure. Uh, I just love Ms. Waters when she comes up with her comments and just kind of just always reminds me of when she says, why can't we work together? Um, and my thing is, is that if we knew that we didn't have a chaplain, um, that perhaps we could have just appointed, well, uh, not we, because we don't have the authority. Um, uh, well, Pastor Glass could have basically came forward and maybe the administration would have said, okay, um, uh, we're going to let him go with the intent that he knows that once we get all of this together and get this ordinance in, in line, that uh, we're going to bring on several other uh, people instead of having it look like, like uh, Councilwoman Skull says, having it look like, okay, this is just another, you know, dark being and thrown at the police department, which I doubt and I hope not. I mean, you've been there five years. I mean, people think the world of you. I know I do. I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Prelly. I, I, I agree with what the mayor says on the different denominations wholeheartedly. Uh, I, I can understand that being for our military. What I just don't understand is why Because there wasn't a specific official appointment made, apparently since the time that he's been mayor, but why push that person aside until you can figure out what the program is? Right. Apparently this guy knew what the program was. Apparently, what was his name? Pastor Glass. I don't personally know him. Mm -hmm. He's behind you. But... I'm <laughs> 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 Apparently he knows what the program was, and 
my understanding from a lot of the police officers, they have up, I'm, I'm a, utmost respect for him. So to set that aside until you get something, figure out what, what the program is, I... Mr. Prickett. Hi, Rick Prickett, just commenting, commenting as a resident. And my question is, um, the council is responsible for the ordinance for the chaplain. State law uh, establishes that. And um, I, I'm assuming, I'm asking, you don't have a responsibility for the policy for the program. Right, that is all administration that's responsible for the program for chaplains. And the mayor has been in office for eight years, going on nine years, this program. He's not aware of at this point. Um, I just want to point out that that's his responsibility, not the council's responsibility. And I'm really surprised, but, you know, it is what it is. But I'm surprised to hear that he has not been aware of the program all these years. He's aware of so many other things. It's not a criticism of the mayor. Don't feel criticized. Um, but um, I'm just really surprised that the program hasn't been uh, altered or, or tailored to the mayor's um, liking uh, after eight years, going on nine years. Uh, he was in the police department. He's very familiar with all these things. I'm sure he knows about a chaplain. But in his defense, I'm not sure there was a chaplain before he came into office. We did not have chaplains and the daily... Uh uh, operations of a chaplain and the chaplain program are the chief of police and the chief will write the program, he will write the rules and rights for the, for the program and that's not a function of the mayor. Okay. Well, I, it seems to me that I have to go back and check that. I thought the mayor has some authority in that area. Administration has authority in that area. Okay. Great. Thank you. Reverend Glass. Glass uh, 7 Scrape Town Road. Uh, I debated, uh, I came here because I knew this was going to be up for a vote. Uh, I had brought some material with me, but I had debated about whether to share it. And uh, since there was an issue as to uh, rules, regs for the program, uh, I can't speak for everyone else. I can only speak for myself. Um, and I can only speak for the organization that uh, I represent, the International Conference of Police Chaplains. It is worldwide. Um, and we asked what's the, you know, the base, let me just take a moment and share with you. You don't have to type because I have a copy for you. But I am bound uh, in that membership by a canon of ethics. That canon of ethics states uh, that the law enforcement chaplain is foremost a member of the clergy not an officer of the law. The chaplain does not happen, does happen to be a sworn officer as well as a chaplain. He or she, if they happen to be, shall make certain everyone understands the role he or she is fulfilling at any given time, always conducting himself or herself in an ethical or professional manner. Departmental requirements for reporting matters up the chain of command and the necessity for confidentiality and communicating with the chaplain make this his imperative. Uh, the law enforcement chaplain shall be and continue to be in good standing as a member of his or her faith group clergy, and any change in the status must be immediately reported to the department authorities and to the ICPC. Law enforcement chaplain serves in an ecumenical capacity. He or she is not to use the chaplaincy to proselytize or to preach in order to win ad, uh, adherence to his or her faith. It shall be assumed the law enforcement chaplain shall be familiar with his beliefs, practices of various faiths, groups represented in his or her department. And it shall further be assumed that the law enforcement chaplain is familiar with the requirements, honesty, integrity, humility, compassion, decency, brotherhood, humanity, and the love that are overarching concepts among faith groups. Um, if there was anything that I took offense to tonight, I do not walk into that police department as a dyed-in-the-wool Baptist. In fact, I constantly say to these officers, you cannot call me reverend. Uh, there was case law on that. Uh, if you look at the ICPC emblem, you will notice that it reflects all faiths and is going to be adjusted to reflect uh, as there are imams now in the chaplaincy programs of the New York, uh, New York City Department. 
uh, part of my training and continued training is to be aware of, am I Catholic? No, I am not. Can I minister to someone Catholic? No, I am not. Uh, yes, I can. You know, uh, can I minister? Don't ask me. Ask the female officers in that department. Do I minister to those that are not my color, not my race? Not my... Ask them. Don't ask me. No. Uh, stop by my house during Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Easter and see that they come, that they sit around my table. See in the department. You know, I get beat on just about as much as any of the other ones do. Uh, I take that as a badge of honor. I am, you know, yes, I am Baptist, but when I walk in there, I am not. I am not a religious official. I am a spiritual advisor to them. And as of such, I have made it a point not to just make my training religious. My training is secular besides. I stand here with, with uh, individual and group crisis, inter, inter, uh, crisis intervention stress management. I've also taken those issues with relation to children. So if there's ever a crisis uh, intervention in an elementary school, I am already trained to be able to go in there. Uh, I am taking the issues now, the issue that, of, of funding. Uh, because I was not reappointed, which uh, uh, I'm still going to that training. I'll take it myself. It is, it is on specifically the issues of forensic interviewing in order to be able to deal with folks that have gone through crisis issues. There have been some of you here on this council that have had to come into the police station, and you've spoken with me, and I've spoken with you. Um, I'm not a Baptist in that station. You come to my church on Sunday, and I'm a Baptist. You pick, prick me, and I bleed blue. Baptist blue. I walk through those doors, you prick me, and I bleed police blue. It is not about who I am. It is about them. Uh, law enforcement's chaplains should not hesitate to give guidance, either to gain guidance, either from department authorities, clergy, or other faith groups, when such guidance becomes necessary to the proper discharge of chaplaincy duties. You want to know what a chaplain's program is like, folks. You, you need, as I said, as I've said before to you, an REV at the front or a PhD at the back does not prepare you. Uh, down the road here uh, is Dan Schaefer. Dan Schaefer is the area representative for the International Conference of Police Chaplains. You want to know what a chaplain's program is like? That's the man you want to get in here. You go down to Vineland. Gary Holden, senior chaplain, has been doing chaplaincy programs for the basic. Uh, Credentials for the credentials necessary for basic requirements for the International Conference of Police Chaplains. He was just over here at, at the emergency center. I believe it was over in West Hampton. That's the third time he's been here. Huh. That's the kind of man that you talk to. They will tell you what is necessary for a program based on this canon of ethics. I'm only reading a few of them to you. Uh, law enforcement chaplain may at the time face situations involving members of his or her general community. The chaplain is to discharge his or her duties in such situations with due regard to any department policies that is to be made of any, uh, any regulations concerning favors, gifts, gratuities. Law enforcement chaplain shall not lend his or her presence to any political or social movement, any manner that may uh, suggest department endorsement of such a movement or any uh, endorsement or advocacy must be undertaken only as a civilian member of the clergy. Political social movements are clearly distinguished from civic office. Uh, there are others here. I'm not going to bother you read you. I'll, I'll give you each a copy or I'll leave a copy here. That's my canon. That's what I stand for. That's what I walk in through those. I, uh, I cannot tell you. I can't tell you who, but I can tell you I have lost count of folks, uh, of officers that have come to my house because I happen to have insomnia that night and my light is on. Huh. There are times when I have come in and this little phone booth that I have uh, in some ways turned into an office, the door is closed. But you want to know something? Some of them are even afraid to do that because they don't want to look weak in front of others. So we find some other place that's outside of town or over at their homes. Huh. I happen to notice on the, on the website of the, of the uh, council excuse me, at the township. There's an area there about volunteering. And it talks about using your vote as an expression of democracy, but it said when you volunteer in that government to which you have voted in, that that is the highest form of expression. I have served in this position not because... Uh, I don't need another feather in my cap. <coughs> I have served in it because it was a way for me to give back to my community. 